Hello, welcome back to Q&A with Dr. K. Today's question is, you say that cattle ranching is a major contributor to the greenhouse gas emissions warming our planet. But what about growing things like rice? Is this not doing the same? Fair enough question, okay? Uh, the answer, the difference between raising a herd of cattle and raising a crop of rice uh, couldn't be greater. Uh, why? Uh, two things, it's become very clear that large scale industrial agriculture, animal agriculture uh, is the driving force for all the environmental destructive forces we are seeing unleashed on planet earth. In order to create the cropland, well, the, the grazing land for our hundreds of millions of, of beef cattle and dairy cows, we've cut down vast areas of forest uh, in North America. Uh, and we are using that land to either graze the cattle or grow their feed crops. And when you drive through Iowa and you see all that corn there, that's not going into tortillas and popcorn. That's animal fodder. Uh, and that is going to be shoveled down the gullets of hundreds of millions of cows and pigs and chickens in order to fatten them for slaughter. They're raising cheeseburgers and fried chicken uh, and pork chops uh, in those cornfields of Iowa. The same, you go th drive through Illinois, Minnesota, you see vast mile wide fields of, uh, of soybeans. That soy is not going to tofu. That again, it's animal fodder. We feed, feed corn and soybeans uh, to all these animals destined for slaughter. And uh, the very act of cutting down the forests and burning them releases carbon dioxide these hundreds of millions of cows and pigs and chickens, they're all uh, breathing out carbon dioxide. They're belching out methane. Uh, the fertilizer that is used to grow the feed corn and soybeans are, are made with ammonia and that releases nitrous oxide into the air. That's a greenhouse gas. So the very act of growing these animals uh, and their feed puts tremendous amounts of uh, greenhouse gases into the uh, atmosphere. Uh, the majority of water that we use in this country is used to irrigate alfalfa to feed the cattle, uh, especially out west, the Colorado River is growing, is, is going dry because they're taking most of the river out of the Colorado River to irrigate alfalfa and, and grow alfalfa in the desert. So the Western ranchers can feed their cattle uh, to make uh, hamburgers. What a bizarre use for that. Well, you don't need that to grow rice. You can grow rice in, in the east of the United States with much less water. Um, the, uh, so the manure that comes off of, uh, of these huge feedlots, that it works its way into the, into the groundwater, poisoning it with nitrites. Uh, the, the, makes the uh, streams and rivers of America undrinkable from all the animal manure. Uh, you don't need that if you're growing organic rice. You don't have to do that. You can do it with veganic plant-based uh, fertilizers. Uh, the soil erosion the, all the, that pours off the corn and soybean fields uh, after every rain. Uh, you could grow rice in, in ways you need much less land uh, to grow the rice to feed people that uh, uh, you could terrace the uh, fields. You could, there are steps you could do uh, with a smaller amount of land involved in order to prevent all the soil erosion. Pick an environmental disaster and large scale animal agriculture is driving it. Uh, so if we shift, if we change to plant-based agriculture uh, uh, because we've changed our diet, if I could push a button and make everybody in America vegan tomorrow, uh, what would happen? We would need so much less land to feed everyone. Um, in order to feed one human being, the standard American diet with, with meat and dairy products every day, it takes two football fields of land to feed that one person for a year, uh, land and all the inputs that go into it, the water, the fertilizer, et cetera. Those same two football fields of land planted with potatoes and rice and fruits and vegetables, you could feed 14 people on that same two football fields of land by feeding, by growing plants and feeding them the plant foods directly. That's how much more efficient that plant agriculture is than animal agriculture. 
if the if America if everyone in the world went vegan tomorrow, it would free up a land area the size of Africa. And what would we do with that land? We would only need about twenty percent of it to grow all the food necessary to feed everybody in the world, a, a whole food plant-based diet. World hunger would disappear. Uh, the, there'd be ample water for everyone because you wouldn't be sucking it out to grow animal fodder. Uh, and uh, wars could stop. There'd be enough land and water for everyone. And what would, and that's just on the quarter of the land we freed up. The rest of the land, what would we do? Let the forests come back. They were originally forests to begin with, Illinois, Minnesota, et cetera. They were all covered with trees. Let those trees come back. Why? Because as the trees grow, they take carbon dioxide out of the air and turn it into solid wood. You know, we talk about carbon capture technology like some machine is needed. Nature came up with the best carbon capture technology of all. They're called trees. I uh, just let the trees grow and uh, and it will reverse global warming. Pay the farmers and ranchers to become foresters and, and nurture healthy uh, regrowth of the trees. Again, there's so much we could do. Uh, so uh, animal agriculture is so destructive to our bodies, so certainly to the animals, but to the natural environment. Changing to a whole food plant-based diet is the key to healing this world and feeding everyone. So no question, uh, rice. Now, you, rice can be grown destructively, and uh, they used to spray arsenic. Oh, well, no, the arsenic was on cotton. And now they're growing rice in the arsenic-drenched soil. Now there's arsenic in the rice. But there's other grains, uh, millet, buckwheat, uh, quinoa that you can grow. Uh, and uh, and over there's low arsenic rice, et cetera. Rice is just the example of grain here. But in general, uh, growing grains organically, basically veganically. Now, the organic agriculture allows blood meal and bone meal, but veganic, just, uh, I mean, a forest is naturally veganic. The leaves from the trees fall uh, and enrich the forest floor. The forests know how to uh, grow new plants veganically. Well, we should take the advice. and and use uh, plant mulch to uh, fertilize our, our rice crops and buckwheat and all the other crops, uh, we can certainly do it. And it would certainly be far uh, more gentle. In fact, it would be healing for the environment because it would let the forest come back. So um, uh, so no, growing rice slash uh, healthy plant-based foods for people is far less destructive uh, uh, than growing uh, animal flesh. And, uh, yeah, and it's the key. Uh, to creating a livable world for all of us.